Can you define Christianity for us in your own words? Cody, I think the best way to define Christianity would be in 1 John chapter 2. Let me read it to you. 1 John chapter 2. starting with verse 4. It says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. So, Cody, a Christian is somebody who simply follows Jesus Christ both in his sacrifice and in his life of obedience to his Father. So, Cody, Christ, as 1 Peter chapter 2 tells us, he left us an example that we should follow in his steps. So, as Christ here on earth walked in submission to his Father, so we today are to walk in submission to Jesus Christ. And Cody, a Christian is somebody who walks in submission to Jesus Christ. As John said there, he that says, if somebody says, I know him, or says, I'm a follower of his, but don't honor what he says in his commands, in his law, then it's, it's a lie. So it's very clear, Cody, from the Bible what a Christian is. It's a follower of Christ in his walk of self-sacrifice and submission to God's will. So what I'm hearing you say is that it's, it's more... And according to the Bible, it's more than just a mere acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. It is also um, a relinquishing, a submission to God and following in his footsteps, becoming Christ-like. Absolutely, Cody. Well, Cody, I mean, the Bible says in James chapter 2 that the devils believe um, See if I can find it here. Uh, it's in James chapter 2. I'm not seeing it right off. But um, it's very clear, Cody. The devils believe. The devils claim to be... Okay, here it is. Verse 19, James chapter 2. Uh, it says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So, Cody, the devils know and the devils profess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They know that. They know it better than we do. But that won't save them, Cody. That won't save them at all. Um, as in this context in James chapter 2, where James talks about the role of faith and works, he shows that true faith is manifest in works of righteousness. So to simply say, Cody, I believe without corresponding work, the devils believe but don't have any corresponding work either. So it's worthless, Cody. It's worthless. And just to uh, clarify there, at the, so you're saying that a true Christian will have Christ-like works. Not necessarily that they work for salvation, that's not the case, but that they will have corresponding works as fruits of that salvation. Absolutely, Cody. As, as Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, Cody, we are saved by grace through faith. But after Paul makes that declaration, he says, For we are his workmanship, created unto Christ, unto good works. 
And Cody works. It's like what William Tyndale said at his trial. He said, works simply tell you what kind of a tree it is. That's all it does. If an orange tree is truly an orange tree, Cody, then there will be oranges on it. It's just that simple. Uh, the oranges simply tell you that it's actually what it claims to be as an orange tree. And so there, there's no self-glorification or uh, self being puffed up, Cody, because any work, any manifestation of the character of God in someone's life, it's nothing that we should boast in because it's only what Christ has done through a submissive, believing soul. So our work, Cody, <laughs> our work is to submit. Our work is to say, I can't do it myself and to rely upon Christ to do for us what we can't do. That's our work. And when we do that, Cody, then Christ will work through our life and produce amazing things that we would sit back and say, my, I didn't do that, but the Lord did that. So to him, Cody, goes all the praise and all the glory because he's actually done it. We've simply submitted to him. And that's our work. Interesting. Um, what is the role of the church in society today? Well, Cody, I think it's... What Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, I think Jesus gave the commission as to why we're here. This, this is our work as a church in the world today. Matthew 28, starting with verse 18, Jesus said, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, now, Cody, of course, the them there in Matthew 28, those were his followers. That was the church in his day. He said this, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, Cody, in those three verses, Jesus outlined the purpose that he saw for his church in this world. He said, go and teach all nations. And he said it twice, Cody, in these three verses. He said, teach all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So, Cody, that is the role of the church in the world today is to teach and to make disciples of all nations, to point people back to the Bible. And as Jesus said here in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Cody, it is the role of the church to point people back to all of Christ's commands. And especially, Cody, all ten of Christ's commandments that are found in Exodus chapter 20. That is the purpose for the church in the world today. 